I'm in Thailand. So, I <sighs> planned a trip to Vietnam and Thailand, but I can't go to Vietnam. I arrived yesterday and I booked a tour to go to some islands. So let's let's go on that tour. <laughs> The first stop is what we could call the holding area. It's where they get you to sign in and then there's uh, several, you know, there's like a bunch of cars coming in. And I swear nobody else is by themselves. It's just me. I'm the only one that I've seen so far that's traveling alone. Who's gonna take my pictures? All right, so as you can see, I'm on a boat and we're gonna head out to a bunch of islands, basically. I had to sit in the front. If you can see, there's the front of the boat because there's not a seat in the back. Plus, I wanted to sit in the front anyways, even though the seats are freaking burning. But I'll show you some of the, the boat trip as well. I think it'll be pretty interesting. So, the first thing, Hold up, the real first thing is why do I look like a freaking mad scientist here? I was definitely windswept. Please excuse the crazy look because clearly I am crazy for shooting like this. Now let's get back to whatever I was saying. After we got on the boat, we drove a little bit to um, Hong Island where we canoe. There's this cave that you can go into and I thought I was gonna be in a little boat by myself because I'm the only one in this whole boat that's uh, traveling alone but a family joined me and the canoeer just paddled us around this island and you can't walk around on it it's just like everywhere there's a one formation that looks kind of like a heart that was cute or it's not formation you look up into the sky and it looks like a heart and there was this cave we went to very dark and then we actually went to a different island called Panak Island to actually see a cave um, with, stal with stalactites and stalagmites in it like rock formations basically and people were trying to touch it and you're not allowed to touch them because the oils in your hands can like degrade and make the stalactite or stalagmite stop growing but the cave is called ice cream cave because the stalagmites look like kind of like an ice cream cone that's melting like melting ice cream and now we've made it to Panyi island which is a floating island you could say it's not floating per se it's like propped up by uh, wood or concrete but there's no ground it's just on top of the water and it seems like a lot of tourists come here it's just a buffet and we're gonna eat here and then go to the next day the food is good we finally made it to james bond island can you see it where is it that in the background uh was it a james bond movie in 1970 something no idea about it <laughs> but it's the name of this tour is is this and i thought there'd be a big beach or something it's not it's a small, you can't swim here type of beach, but it looks very cool. If I look hot and sweaty, it's because I am. There's this little trail or stairs. I don't know where it goes, but I'll follow it. If you can hear the sound of cicadas, I'm so happy to hear cicadas again. They're in Texas, they're all over the world, but they're not in Kazakhstan. So whenever I hear them, I'm like, ah, reminds me of home, even though you know, cicadas are in every part of the world. Before I came to Thailand, I was saying like, oh, I want to go so bad because I want to be somewhere where it's hot and where it's humid. I'm now somewhere where it's hot and it's humid and I'm dying. Oh my gosh, this is a nice view. Let me show you. I'm a little bit nervous about this trip um, because I was supposed to go to Vietnam as well, but my visa didn't work out. Uh, so I have extra days and I only have my first hotel booked and I have nothing else booked. Something just bit me. It's my second day here and I'm a little nervous. So I want to take you with me on this little trip. See how it goes. Um, I obviously won't be filming every day. Just what I think is interesting and hopefully nothing's too boring. But this is pretty interesting, no? Something funny happened while I was here at James Bond Island. I guess the people on the boat have kind of picked out that I'm alone because obviously I'm not talking to anybody but then they people have come up to me and asked like oh are you a vlogger I say yes but like it's not my job <laughs> and the last stop is Naka Island I thought it was gonna be beautiful serene peaceful but it's full of tourists and the beach is like Meh. I wouldn't say this is oh my god the best beach ever but 
the jet skiing and the paragliding is cheaper here than in Patong Beach. So Patong Beach jet skiing paragliding for one person is 1,500 baht. Here it's 1,000 baht. I'm so tired. Like on the boat, I just want to like sleep. <laughs> Even though everything's very beautiful, I'm still just tired. All right, so we've come to the end <clears throat> of the day. Back on the boat and we're going to head back to the mainland Phuket. I mean, the island of Phuket. It's not the mainland, obviously, but I'm so tired. But it was fun today. I'll see you in a few seconds in some other part of Thailand. Good morning and welcome to Chiang Mai. It's probably not morning when you're watching, but it is for me. I'm currently at a temple called Doi Sut Tip and it's in the mountain areas, a little bit outside of Chiang Mai, but I'm here on a temple tour, I guess you could say. We're going to several temples in the area and one of which, the first one was this one. We came here first. I woke up at like four o'clock and got in the van at 4.30 because we came here for the sunrise. And the whole Chiang Mai region is part of an old kingdom called Lana. And Lana um, is not necessarily Thai. There's parts of old Lana kingdom that are also now in Myanmar and other, and I think maybe Laos, I'm not sure. These stairs down from the temple have, as you can see behind me, this snake or lizard-like looking texture. And that is Naga, so a type of mythical creature that is supposed to protect Buddhist temples in Thailand. And this temple is not like Thai style, I guess we could say. It's Lana style, which means the architecture of the pagoda, which is supposed to have Buddhist relics in it actually, is more of a rectangular shape rather than the other Thai style shape, I guess you could say, which is more rounded. The story behind this temple is that it was the sixth king of the Lana Empire. He was given the Buddhist relics. He put it on top of a white elephant. A white elephant is kind of iconic in Thailand. The white elephant walked around until he got to this area, circled it clockwise three times, and then died. So the sixth king of the Lana kingdom was like, well, <laughs> I think this is the spot. And so they built the temple. So I just donated, I can't think of the right word right now, but gave to some monks. And I'm sorry if the, if the frame is out because I thought I was gonna stand in one place, but I ended up standing in another. And I'm filming myself, so I can't resituate it. But that was really cool and nice, I liked it. And I'm glad I got to make some merit. So we're at another temple. This one, I can't remember the name, but I'm pretty sure it's like the colloquial name is like the temple in the jungle. So it's a Myanmar based temple. Like the design is a bit Myanmar. There's a Sing, which is um, a lion type of mythical character. In uh, Thai Laos, it has the head of an animal, but in Myanmar, it has the head of a human. So that's one way that we can know it's a Myanmar um, temple and also the symbol of the peacock, which is the symbol of the king of Myanmar. Here I am again, walking down some stairs. We're at the last stop of this tour, which is Wat Umong. And Umong in Thai denotes tunnel. So according to the guide, this temple was first built by the first king of Lana, but then the sixth king of Lana built tunnels um, for meditation purposes. Behind us there, is the stupa and it's in an Indian style because apparently the King Ashoka of India sent out a lot of Buddhist monks around the world basically and some of them ended up in Thailand and this one is in an Indian style maybe from monks that that came from India to spread the world word of Buddhism there's different recesses where you can meditate of course you can see Buddha images in different areas and it's a nice little way to end it you know a little cool tunnel very hot 
stupid area. There's no, there's no shade over there, but that's the end. So I will see you in the next part of my trip, wherever that is. <laughs> Hello! I am currently in the Chiang Rai area. I'm not actually in Chiang Rai right now, but I'm in uh, maybe an hour away from Chiang Rai. I'm staying with a co-worker and his wife, but one of their younger friends agreed to take me around and I went to the Golden Triangle, which is where Myanmar, Laos and Thailand meet with a river running between them. But currently I am at Choi Fong Tea Farms. So this is a very big tea farm. Uh, as you probably know, tea is grown in cooler climates. So in this area, it's quite mountainous. So this is a tea farm, you know, in Thailand, and it's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. And it's so peaceful. It's, it's a place where there's a lot of like local tourists. I'm the only white person here, <laughs> but there's, there's local Thai tourists. And it's so relaxing. I had Thai tea, obviously. And so ends the segment in Chiang Rai. Maybe we'll see if there's any more. Ha. And here you thought we were gonna be in a different place. I, I lied. I didn't know it, but I was able, I am able currently to go to this white temple here in Chiang Rai. Now this white temple was designed by a famous artist in Thailand. I'm sure you can look it up and get better information than me, but it's absolutely beautiful, entirely white and very intricately designed. Let's take a look. I couldn't film on the inside. It's not allowed to take photography, but oh my gosh, if you come to Chiang Rai, you must come to the white temple. The inside is amazing. There are so many details. So the outside is completely white. The inside is completely colorful. There's like pop culture references in there, but it's like a lot of intricate design. You can spend a lot of time looking at each little section. And I would say it kind of has this like dark-ish theme. There's a lot of what you could say like evil or bad in the um, images there, but not in a scary way. In a, in a way that like depicts the modern world in a Buddhist light, in a Buddhist mind frame, framework, I guess. I don't know if you can see behind me, but there's a million and one of these little shiny things dangling. And wow, so cool, very impressive. You've seen a white temple today. You've seen a golden temple today. Here's a blue temple. No, it doesn't, I know it doesn't look that blue from, from this angle, but let me show you everything is blue. Everything is blue. And if you look, look up close, this place is also blue. I wanted to go, I asked my friend if he'd take me because if we're gonna see a white temple, might as well see a blue one too. I'm a simple person. I came here for one reason. I wanted to see the Blue Temple, but also I wanted to eat blue ice cream <laughs> at the Blue Temple. So it's coconut flavored, I haven't tried it yet. Let me, let me have a little bite. And there's blue rice on it too. Not blue peanuts though. And underneath is co blue coconut milk. Mm. <laughs> Tastes like coconut ice cream. But I'm happy. I love this type of stuff. Themed things. Three days later. I look like an absolute mess, but that's because it's so hot. I'm always sweating. I am heading to Bangpe Waterfall here in Phuket. I drove my little motor scooter, my moped, so long to get here. And my mic isn't working. Ugh. Whenever I travel, this type of stuff happens. Yesterday I went to a waterfall, Kafu Waterfall. I didn't film it because I'm lazy. Some things I just want to enjoy for myself, you know? So 
Bang Pei waterfall is supposed to be good and I think it will be good because it rained a lot yesterday. So I've been running around Thailand for the past three weeks. Um, I went to Phuket and then Chiang Mai, then Chiang Rai, and then now I'm back in Phuket. So there'll be two videos, one in Kazakh and this one in English. The English one is obviously easier for me to film. My trip has been good and bad. I don't want to get into the bad, but yeah, sometimes it's hard traveling by yourself. I really like Thailand as a country and their tourism infrastructure is absolutely amazing. So you can easily travel within Thailand if you know English. And luckily I do know English. All right, I'm tired of talking. I'm gonna keep hiking up and I'll see you at the waterfall, see how many people are there potentially swimming. I met some Saudis, some Saudi men, four or five of them, and they were very friendly as expected. And they invited me to go with them on their private jet to Mykonos and Monaco. And I was like, oh, what's the payment? I didn't say that obviously because do I look like that type of person? Like this? Clearly not. And now I'll ride back home. Obviously I did not go to Mykonos and the other place. <laughs> I mopeded back and then returned back to Kazakhstan. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one which will be me speaking Kazakh in Thailand. Be ready for the disaster.